So why should you become a pilot? It can be an extremely rewarding activity to pursue. The most common career for a pilot is the airline pilot. I think most of you could have probably guess that. And there's a lot of benefits to pursuing that career. The first one is monetary compensation. It's a very well-paying job and there's a lot of rewards that come with making good income from your job. That's why you have a job, right? New destinations or being able to travel, that door is so open to you as an airline pilot. I mean, I can't imagine an easier career to be able to travel with. Hi everyone, this is Liz Brassoff from Thrust Flight. I'm the chief flight instructor here, and today we're gonna to talk about how to become a pilot. So the very first place to start when trying to decide should I become a pilot or shouldn't I, what does the path look like, is to begin with something called a discovery flight. A discovery flight is a flight that you take to get to know a school and to get to know pilot training, right? Is this the path I want to take? Do I enjoy this activity? Um, what does it actually require to make it all the way down the road? But it's just a really great way to shop for schools and then like I said, shop for the activity itself. So is this something you want to do for fun, for a career? Not at all. It wasn't what you thought it was. So the, the flight in general is usually about an hour long. Um, you do it with an instructor, obviously, because you don't know how to fly an airplane yet. And uh, it's usually sold at a discounted rate at schools so that they can um, gain interest from you, right? Kind of reduce some of the barriers to entry so that you can dip your toe in the water and see if becoming a pilot is something you really want to pursue. Once you've decided, hey, I actually like this activity. I did a discovery flight. Now I'm starting to think a little bit more seriously about pursuing it either for fun or for career, it's time to look at, am I eligible to become a pilot? So the very first certificate you'll pursue is called a private pilot certificate. And the eligibility requirements are um, pretty straightforward. You have to be 17 years old to become a private pilot and you have to read, write, and speak English, be fluent in the language, right? Um, you also have to uh, pass the certification requirements. So let's talk a little bit more about those. There's a minimum number of hours you have to be trained. So at most schools, that's gonna be 35 to 40 hours, just depending on how they're certified. In general, that would be the best student, best weather, best airplane schedule, right? So you should plan on more hours than that, but that's the minimum. So the minimum is getting uh, 35 to 40 hours of flight training, depending on how the school is certified. You do have to solo an airplane prior to taking the test to become a pilot. And there's a few other sub requirements in that training, right? You have to do some night flying. Um, you have to do some training with uh, instrument procedures or basically like if you had flown into a cloud. So beyond the flight training piece, you have to uh, pass an aeronautical knowledge test or basically a written test. This has to be done before you can take the test to become a pilot. So it's like first step, pass a written test, second step past the actual practical exam where you get your license afterwards. Um, that written test can be taken at any time. You can do it before you even begin pilot training. And there's lots of materials online to help study for it, but that is uh, one step to becoming eligible to be a pilot. Private pilots need a minimum of third class medical certificate. They can also do a program called basic med, which is something you could talk over with your aviation medical examiner. So this is something pretty easy to um, get no matter where you're at in, in the country. Um, there's a lot of doctors that you can visit that can issue them. They're called uh, aviation medical examiners, but they're, they're all over the United States, so it shouldn't be hard to get an appointment with one and obtain a medical certificate. So the general path for a pilot in training is to get their initial pilot certificate, it's called the private pilot certificate, and then typically they add an instrument rating after that. That's uh, the next step where now you can not only just fly, you can fly in the clouds. Uh, the private pilot certificate now allows you to fly anytime you'd like, day or nighttime. You can take passengers with you. Um, you can fly multiple types of aircraft, and, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, but really opens up the door to use this certificate for fun with your friends, with your family. The major restriction on it is that you can't be compensated for any of the flying you do, right? You can't get paid for it. Somebody can't cover all the costs for you on most of your flights. Um, and that's where we get into now the commercial pilot certificate. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about the details on each one. Typically after that, the normal pilot progression, if you're going to do this for a career or continue on a little further than just for fun, um, is the commercial pilot certificate. This is where you can now get paid to fly. You can be employed at multiple different companies or uh, you could start your own company as a pilot. Um, but really now 
removes that gate of you couldn't be compensated for your activities as a pilot. So after the commercial pilot certificate, if you're uh, pursuing certain paths in the aviation industry, you would need to then build a considerable amount of hours to be eligible for the next step in your, in your job career path. So a lot of uh, students will do the flight instructor certificate, um, but it, it's optional. That doesn't have to be the path that you take. So the step in between that we talked about was the instrument rating. One thing a private pilot cannot do is fly in the clouds. So if I want to be able to do that or fly on cloudy days, I need to obtain my instrument rating, which requires a whole other practical test. It's, it's kind of the next step um, that most pilots take after the private pilot. There's a couple of different certification terms that we use. So you can get a certificate. You can also get a rating or an endorsement. So let's talk about the difference between those three things. Um, a certificate is when you take a practical exam and you obtain a new uh, pilot certificate or like a driver's license is what you could picture. It's a plastic card, um, it's got your name on it, doesn't have your picture like a driver's license, um, but is a, a pretty big step. So you get a certificate when you become a private pilot, you get a certificate when you become a commercial pilot, and some of these other things we've been talking about are added as ratings instead. So a rating is additional privileges you could get on that certificate. Um, so for example, if I'm a private pilot and I want to get the privilege of flying in the clouds, I need an instrument rating, right? Or if I'm a private pilot or a commercial pilot and I want to get the privilege of flying an airplane with two engines, I need to get a multi-engine rating, right? So it's like additional privileges on my pilot certificate. I still stayed a private pilot, but now I can fly in the clouds as a private pilot, or I still stayed a private pilot, but now I can fly a multi-engine airplane as a private pilot. So it's that initial certificate that I can add extra privileges to, which we call ratings. Um, endorsements are another term we use where you can also get additional privileges. Um, these you don't have to visit an examiner to get, which is excellent. Uh, this I can just visit a flight school and work with a flight instructor to receive so examples of endorsements could be uh, flying a tailwheel airplane um, or a different type of, of aircraft really, right? Uh, complex aircraft, so we've got retractable landing gear, controllable pitch propeller, right? Um, I can get an endorsement to be able to fly that type airplane because previously I wouldn't have been allowed to. Um, high performance airplanes, so airplanes with more than 200 horsepower, that's a privilege I can get by just visiting a flight instructor and receiving the endorsement. So endorsements come from flight instructors, ratings, certificates, they come from examiners. I have to actually take a, a practical exam. So next we're going to talk about the cost of becoming a pilot. Uh, so flying costs money, unfortunately, right? It's not a free hobby. Um, so there's a couple things to consider when you're weighing the cost of the training. Uh, the first thing is most schools are going to quote it as an hourly rate. So they're going to charge for the instructor and they're going to charge for the airplane and they'll tell you those two numbers separately and you kind of have to do the math to figure out the rest. Um, a good flight school, in my opinion, would be able to help you draw a quote or an estimate for the entire training you're, you're looking to receive. So if I come and I say I'd like to do a private pilot certificate, they'd be able to say, well, here's our per hour rates. We average that this will cost this many dollars to become a private pilot, right? That they can help you as you're shopping for that. So with the hourly rates, they vary quite a bit. You could have a school that's maybe only charging $50 an hour for an airplane, and you could have another school that's charging $200 an hour for an airplane. And so the differences are really gonna be your individual choice on what do I value more? Maybe the $50 an hour airplane is available less often because so many people were drawn to the price. Or maybe it's because it's a 40 year old airplane and it looks like it and it shows the wear, right? But perhaps that's not important to you. Whereas the $200 an hour airplane might be brand new, less than a year old, or maybe it's got uh, updated avionics suite in it or uh, new issued from the factory with it. It could have air conditioning or other luxuries. So it really just kind of matters what's more important to you. Is it the comfort while you're flying? Is it the overall cost? Is it the availability? All of those impact the rental rates. Another thing that can impact the cost of training is fuel. Uh, some schools or places that will rent you an aircraft for training will uh, have two different rates. They call them dry rates and wet rates. That's essentially, is the fuel included in this number or not? Um, so again, that's something that I'd want to look at when trying to compare price and, and make a decision on where I want to train. 
So we talked a lot about aircraft rental rates. Instructor rates is the other component or the cost, right, for flight training is you need an instructor to take you all the way through. So there's a couple different types of activities that you'll do with your instructor and they could charge the same price for all of them or they could do a different price. Um, you're gonna do something we call ground school or ground training with your flight instructor. You'll also do flight training, right, receive uh, coaching and instruction from them in the actual airplane. Uh, I would say the majority of schools typically charge the same rate for those two activities, but they could offer other options. For the ground school, perhaps they have group classes that would now be a discounted rate to you, or they might use an online curriculum for a certain fixed price and supplement with time with your instructor to try and help, again, reduce costs. So there's, there's quite a bit of variable there, depending on how much you self-study or how much, um, essentially, you can learn without their assistance and that they can fill. And that's really, again, up to you as the customer. You could ask the instructor to provide you all the instruction. You could tell them, hey, I'd really like to do as much as I can at home. Guide me on how to do that. Help me find the proper curriculums to take or the homework that I should be completing to minimize our time together to help manage costs. So what can you do as a pilot? Airlines is not the only career option. We said that was definitely the most popular chosen by pilots, um, but there's lots of other options. You can be a corporate pilot. That's where you fly for more of a private business or individual instead of an airline, but typically still jets or larger aircraft. Um, you could do agricultural flying like crop dusting or spraying for mosquitoes, all sorts of things. Um, um, you could be a flight instructor, you could do cargo flying, so still large jets or even they've got all sizes of aircraft that do cargo. Um, in the United States we move a lot of boxes. <laughs> Uh, everything from UPS down to um, the United States Postal Service, right? Everything's got to get moved. You could do banner towing. You could be a stunt pilot. Um, there's another category that typically refer to as bush pilots, but usually they fly cargo and people, transportation in places that are remote, like Alaska or Africa. Um, takes a whole nother skill set on pilots. Um, all of those career options are very different and can all be rewarding. So many options as well as airlines. That about wraps up today's video on how to become a pilot. We hope it answered your questions if you're looking at becoming one. So share this video with your friends that also might be considering becoming a pilot. And if you've got questions, leave us a comment and don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos.